Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. My first time in Canada. My second time overboard. So uh, I would like to present you a topic by the title Android Practical Introduction to the Insecurity. Things that, as a work for the Croatian government cert, uh, I presented a strain of this talk half a year ago to some government officials. My task was to make a, I would say, FAD talk, so fear, uncertainty, doubt. So after this talk, they were really scared, or, or individuals were really scared. What's, what are the capabilities of attackers on the Android platform? So my task was to, to go through all the security aspects of the Android and to pinpoint what you should do from your user's perspective and what you should not do. Also, as I work for the government, I have some inside info, so I will pinpoint what you should really take care of. <laughs> Especially those of you that are kind of uh, uh, crypto anarchists or, or, or hack activists. I will pinpoint you what you should do, what you should not do. As part of this uh, talk, there will be a presentation. Presentation victims are enumerated, enumerated here. I have the one old LG mobile, one new Z3 Compact, and one virtual EEPC. So I picked those because the first one is really obsolete. So nobody should use something like this. The third one is something that is kind of deprecated, so anything below uh, Android KitKat should be slightly removed from the market. And also the second one is my actual, I would say, of official uh, mobile that I take care of. So I'll also present what are the attack vectors on, on the up-to-date uh, mobile phone. Demo gods were really angry at me <laughs> yesterday. All started with the update of the Metasploit. And yesterday it crashed. I also tried to update the main, main to middle proxy. It crashed. Burp didn't work. So yesterday evening, I just went to the solitude of my hotel room and I recorded everything that I should present here. So it all started something like this. Also, all of a sudden, one of important uh, binaries or, or utilities that I'm using, Android Screencast, it's really a cool tool to, to do the presentations on the Android phones and tablets. All of a sudden, that project just ceased to exist in the last couple of days, so I really had trouble. But... As said, <laughs> I went to the solitude of my hotel room and I just started with the mate and my lab. So this is mo most probably the most important slides of this talk. So uh, I will go through all of these cases through the talk and I'll pinpoint what's the problem in the, in the first part of those guineal, I would say, since of the Android insecurity. And the last one, deadly, is especially important from you, for you as a an user. So in guineal or system problems, we have the sensitive data on SD card. Everybody does it. Also, we have the vulnerable OS, which is, in majority of cases, provider's fault. So it's kind of a problem for provider to support all those older versions of Android. Also, they like you to, to buy new phones, new tablets. So they just passively force you to, to change your current uh, device. 
Also, the third one, Trusted CA's credentials. I picked at it uh, by accident, and I think it's one of the greatest conspiracies. I will pinpoint here, you will see why. The deadly user problems are strictly related to, the, to your user uh, decisions. So whether you will root your device, whether you will turn the USB debugging, whether you will not use the screen lock, or whether you will use the unknown sources as a source for installation of, of uh, potential malicious binaries. I'll go through all of these steps and I'll pinpoint how you become uh, vulnerable as a user if you just turn on uh, a single step or single point in, in there. So sensitive data on SD card, as said, everybody has sensitive data. So attacker can just pick your can just pick your mobile phone. So this is kind of inside info. So attackers, if they are targeting targeting you physically, they will distract you from your mobile phone. They will just need five to ten minutes, and they'll just try to extract as much data as as they can in in less at least time possible. So. In this case, if everything is turned on, if if each of those features is is uh, is turned on or off as it should be, they will, as a last resort, they will just use your take your SD card and just copy everything from there. So this is just a dummy demo. When you try to mount the screen locked. When you try to mount the string locked uh, mobile to the to the your laptop, you won't get anything. But if you suddenly extract the SD card from a mobile phone, just use the SD card reader. You will just be able to to uh, get some potentially problematic or sensitive information. So, as said, I work for the government, so I really shouldn't have things in my downloads. Uh, in my download uh, folder or inside the pictures. For example, I, I like to to take pictures of, of passports or of, of some sensitive data when I go uh, in, in certain visits. So it's kind of a bad, bad uh, habit. So attacker can, can just take your data from the from the SD card and copy it. There is something called like, uh, Android phone encryption. It should prevent this kind of attacks, but one guy, specifically, he has the handle of G3RT, he noticed that if you install a software that which uses uh, Android accessibility services, all of a sudden the encryption password of the, of the SD card itself will be reset to the default. He doesn't know why is it so. He didn't get the reply, and the, the default password of the on Android phones is the default underscore password. So he also has a nice scenario where you can do the social engineering on a on a victim and just pretend or, or just force him to to install some. Uh, some application, like in this case, screen notifications is really a name of an application. That's when you try to install it and try to enable it, it will also kindly tell you that your device won't use your screen locked and has that encryption. So nobody cares about those warnings, but all of a sudden, if you thought that you are uh, that you are safe by installation of those kind of of applications, you won't be safe in it. The second part, vulnerable OSs. This is a uh, slightly uh, unreadable, but I will try to to just summarize. Half of those devices here are vulnerable to highly critical 
uh, vulnerability. So you can do stuff like the remote code execution or privilege escalation. So in 50% of cases, you can just uh, either uh, do the remote attacks against the victim, or if you have the if you have the physically the phone, you can do the privilege escalation and do some uh, data stealing from it. So roughly half of, of all devices currently are highly critical. Uh, according by this site here, Android vulnerabilities. This is um, slightly, I would say, this, these are not the numbers for the high critical vulnerabilities, but uh, also including the less uh, critical uh, vulnerabilities. So around 80% of, of devices today are estimated to be vulnerable to some kind of, of uh, vulnerability. Also, I'll just show you one demo on an Android 4.0, so against the, the virtual ASUS PC. So I, I had stored some sensitive data here inside the notes. So this is just for demo purposes. Then I started the, the Metasploit. Inside the Metasploit, when you search for the Android, you will be shown or you will be presented with around 20, 30 different exploits against the Android um, platform. In this case, this particular ex exploit webview, it's really uh, a good, uh, good way how to present the, the uh, attacks against the Android, Android platform. Here you can see if the victim visits some malicious, some malicious URL, he will immediately contact back to the attacker. And now here inside the shell, I'm the attacker. Now I'm a regular user as called app underscore six. When I try to to uh, to search through some sensitive data, I'll, I'm immediately being permission denied. But a good, or I would say, a, a good thing from the penetration testers' point of view is uh, when you have the already pre-rooted machine. In most of cases, you just need to do the CSU to to uh, force the privilege escalation to the root with the root privileges. Here you can see that I've tried uh, successfully uh, been able to to get those sensitive data that are stored inside the notepad. So you will see also through the demonstration parts, those DB, DB uh, files along the data folder inside the Android platform are the most, I would say, bountiful from the attacker's point of view. Lots of, of user information is stored there. So those are SQLite uh, SQLite databases, and by just opening them inside the SQLite, I would say, some utility, you can just prove what is stored there. And also, this is the demo against the, the my up to date uh, mobile phone. When you run the scanner as the, the, uh, as the VTS, you will see the perfect score. So now there is an anecdote here. Now it's a perfect score, so 25 out of 25, so my device is secure. But as the uh, stage fright came half a year ago, almost a year ago, my device was full of holes. So until the first proof of concept came for bypassing the ISLR, uh, a protection mechanism inside the Android, my provider just didn't push the, the update for the stage fright. So I was potentially being vulnerable for more than four or five months. So this is all up to, to your provider, whether he will uh, let your device be vulnerable or not.
as said and in the introduction, this is probably the, I would say, the greatest conspiracy <laughs> ever. So if you, if you will take something from this presentation, I'll just uh, want you to, to, to give you a worm inside your brain to just do the proper research in this field. So everybody knows how, how the PKR or the CA is working in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the security world or, or inside the browsers. So you have the, you have the large amount of, of bodies, I would say, that you trust in some way. And the problem is, I don't have the screenshots here, but I went through the, through the whole process of, of how, how could I become a, a CA or trust a CA inside the certain browser. And I went through the Chromium and Firefox repositories and their issues. And all of a sudden, I've seen lots of anonymous people. They are just forcing their CAs inside, the, inside the, either Firefox or the Chromium code base. And that whole process uh, can take up to a year, and all of a sudden Google suddenly realizes, okay, we should include this same uh, CA or, or, or this same authority inside our browsers and blind trust. And the problem is that, problem is, I will show you, I have a nice demo here. When, when I started to work on this, I just played around. I went to the settings. I went to the, to the list of those certificate authorities that I blindly trust. So you can find them inside your mobile phone, inside the trusted credentials, and you new screw Scroll down, you'll see lots of trust CAs, lots of government CAs, American Online CA, uh, and all of a sudden I've seen a really nice one. I've seen a <laughs> really nice one. Government Root Certification Authority. So, common name blank, organization unit blank, issued by blank, common name blank, organization unit blank, and it lasts for 30 years. It's 4,096 bits long, and it stays in your mobile for 30 years. <laughs> And that same, that same CA, attracted by, the, by its hash IDs, it belongs to the, in this case, it belongs to the Chinese government. So Chinese apparently somehow forced the Android to include that same fishy CA inside the Android phone. What that, what that means, that means that I'll show you all, other examples uh, along the way. But in this case, it means that Chinese government, if they want, they can just do the main, the middle of on any kind of SSL encrypted channel. So they just force the, the mobile phone users or mobile phone uh, manufacturers to include the CA or fishy CA inside, let it, let there it be for 30 years, and we can do whatever we want. And the problem is that there is not only Chinese involved. I'll show you. Just to show you the practical attack when you have a power like that. So I made, I made the middle proxy on my mobile. I inserted myself as a CA, or to be, uh, to be uh, correct, I inserted the burps CA inside of it, and I played the CA role, so in the middle. 
So this myself, I'm playing the main domain transparent proxy. I will show you inside my Wi-Fi settings. I put the proxy configuration for, for uh, toward my laptop. So on the laptop, I have the burp installed. You can see the user certificates. You will see all of a sudden lots of HTTPS requests going on here. I, I as an end user, would think that I, I'm, uh, I'm not vulnerable, but at the end, at the end, all the HTTPS is, is plain and transparent on the on the burp side. So, also in this case, I've run the for for hub uh, application just to show you how also the the authorization tokens are being used. Also, the you can you will see the username and passwords and stuff like that. So, I'm just the regular user, or I would say regular tester. And how would one government do it? So I went to the to the uh, to the papers, and I've seen lots and lots and lots of examples that are pinpointing the, this same thing: that the the government authorities are forcing the mobile manufacturers, also the browser manufacturers. To include their own CAs inside of of, of their uh, trusted CA repository, you can see here that the Microsoft, Google, Apple, and Mozilla included the Chinese authorities. Also, there are known attacks, so there are really uh, uh, there are known attacks that were being used by those same CAs implanted. But it's not only the problem of the Chinese. You can see also the French one. They're also being uh, caught. So you can see has found the intermediate CA was used in commercial device. Things that also they were being caught by using the, the, the main, the middle attacks by their own CAs. And this is the, the list I was able to, to extrude from different sources. What are the, the world's governments uh, around the world, which government can do this kind of attacks? So transparently, just looking into your encrypted communication. So France, Hong Kong, Japan, Spain, Netherlands, they all can do just the main middle attacks against you. In some cases, you will see that the CA is really called the government, but in some cases, like, China, you will see the Internet Network Information Center. Also, I don't trust those CAs that have lots of trust inside. That there, there are like 50 different CAs that have the trust inside, and I really don't trust them. <laughs> so, the the morale here or point here, main point here is that there is at the end there is no. There are no quantum computers. There are no huge rigs that do the decryption or cracking of the Diffie-Hellman or ecliptic curves. You just have to have the implanted trusted CA inside the browser or the mobile phone. That's it. Now the, the user scenes. The first and maybe the most important one is the routing. So when you enter inside the Google what is Android routing, you will have get the the uh, definition. So equivalent to jailbreaking, unlocking of the operating system. So by doing the Android routing, you can do whatever you want. You as an you as an user have the full right to to fully exploit your mobile. The thing is that those shady organizations they really like you to do the routing. I know that for fact. Also, when you when you try to search for the root of for your mobile, this is the this is the main 
a site where you will uh, find some kind of routing tool or, or some kind of privilege escalation tool to be help you to route your device. This is how uh, this this is how common routing tools look like. So you have the Frama route, Lambda King route, Super One Click. Those are the most famous one. Also. A cool thing with all those uh, routing tools is that uh, they install is something called recovery mode. So things that you are uh, be with installation of your or, or by running your uh, routing tool, you are giving a uh, full right to the, that same tool to install something called recovery mode. Recovery mode has the Full root privileges. It starts before the, or you can start before the OS itself, and inside of it you can do lots of uh, goodies. For example, if some of you uh, paid attention in the Mr. Robot, this was one of the uh, screens uh, screens being shown when the when the main guy, or oh, not the the bad guy try to install the the remote administration tool, he used the recovery mode, he used this option, install zip from SD card, I will show you how it works. So, so by pressing a certain combination of buttons while powering on, you will get your mobile to the recovery mode. You won't see much here. It's kind of clumsy, but you can mount all those special directories like data system, SD card. You can browse, install whatever you want. And attackers prefer just to, to put the USB inside. When you have the USB inside, you just get to the ADB shell and you can do whatever you want. So you have the full root privileges. This is just an example how to turn on the ADB if it's previously disabled, just to help you as an attacker in, in, in following attacks, just to not uh, push the device into the root. This was just an example how to, how to uh, use it, but I'll show you the proper example. So, so you can, as said, there are lots of those databases inside, like contacts. So you just uh, put your USB into the rooted phone. You can just prove all your calls all numbers, all dates, all durations, names. This is what agencies like to do. So contacts, data, I'll also show you the SMSs. So there is no constraint in just pulling all the data from the phone itself. I'm just showing you how it, how easy it is just to get to the to the nice parts. So all the dates, all the SMS contents, all numbers, who called you, what they wrote. So this is just an example. So routing your phone is a big no-no. <laughs> uh, I'll also show you, this is an example. This is similar to the Mr. Robot's hack. I'll just show you the, you are just pretending that you are trying to, to install the uh, fake updates while inside there is an Android Android application, in this case it's file manager. So from inside the the recovery mode, even if you can't 
put use your USB, you can just install something like this file manager, or, or in case of Mr. Robot, you can install some remote administration tool. In this case, I deleted the gesture key, so I as an attacker, I want to to delete any kind of of, of uh, any kind of uh, screen protection mechanism. In this case, it's, it was a swipe. I just removed it, and when I rebooted the the phone, then there was no swipe protection being left. USB debugging. So USB debugging is a mode that, while uh, being enabled on the Android, you you can enforce or you can use as a developer a, a slightly higher privileges than the regular user. So you as a developer, you you really want slightly higher. You don't want the pseudo privileges, but slightly higher than the than the regular user one. So you can enable it inside the developer options, obviously. But the problem with the USB debugging, so you have the you have the screen protection here. See, you have the screen protection here. Swipe, but that doesn't. Pre pre uh, that doesn't prevent the ADB shell or you as an with the as an attack with the USB cable to to access the phone. Also, as said, you get slightly high privileges. So by I just pause here. By accessing the data with the regular privileges, so this was being uh, this was being run against my up-to-date phone. So by accessing the my user data with the regular ADB shell, I won't be able to do any kind of browsing around the proud data. But as said, you get slightly higher privileges. You can do something called ADB backup. So ADB backup does the backup. So in this case, I backed up all the Firefox data. So all the bookmarks, history, cookies, everything. I got it on my machine. Also, it has some, I would say, obscure way how to obfuscate what is going on. But some smart guys at the that mentioned forum, they found a way how to how to successfully extract data from it. So. When you go to the data, you see those database goodies, like for example, URLs that you visited, times of visits, bookmarks, history, what you like to visit. Okay. Screen lock. So, screen lock is something that should be a regular user, I would say. It's a user privilege. <laughs> you should all use the screen lock. It's the first line of defense against the uh, Snoopy attackers. So, you can choose pattern, pin, and password. Each of those uh, Protection mechanisms are, are good enough. There is really not the best one here. So by turning it on, you'll get either the swipe, either pin, or, or password, whatever you like. Also, I just keep the demo. Also, this is just an example. You have the rooted phone with the with the swipe turned on. I'll mention you that gesture key. Inside of it, there's some binary data, but they are 
people, some smart people that successfully made these kind of tools. So by having a rooted phone, even if you have the screen lock, and the attacker will successfully, in this case, extract the, your swipe pattern. So I try the swipe, and that's it. And then, this is also the example. I don't need even to, to crack it. So obviously, I don't know the swipe. I just go to the rooted phone and just remove the gesture key. And you can swipe whatever you want. And that's it. So rooting your device is a big no-no. <laughs> but even this is with my latest up-to-date uh, mobile phone, it has the ADB or USB debugging turned on. There are also some smart people around that made this. So I don't know the pattern, but the USB debugging is turned on. I downloaded, it's called anti-guard. I pushed it. I started it. So ADB shall start, anti-guard and lock. Oh, no screen lock. There's also a nice icon here called launcher. Just press it and that's it. So, nice thing. Afterwards, I just uninstall it and like nothing happened. <laughs> so, if you screw at least one of those things I've said at the beginning, the attackers will have the slight advantage. But also there is a system problem. So uh, as I pinpointed, in some cases, providers don't push the regular updates. And this was being found in the start of the year. So one guy, John Gordon, he just typed in an insanely, uh, insanely large password, and he bypassed the lollipop, lollipop passcode screen lock. So, okay. Unknown sources. So, lots of you, as you're, I'll say, part of the security community. Uh, most probably turned on this feature. So to install some kind of either virus, cracked software, either some security software. Also, uh, the, the Android itself is really user-friendly because it says, okay, you can install this, but when you go and you click to settings, it will pinpoint you what to turn on. So to just nicely turn you to the, to the page where you should turn on the unknown sources. So when you turn it on, it will have the nice warning. You are vulnerable to attacks and la la la. This, the, this is the uh, from one, this is report from the Juniper online report, which says that currently there are more than 500 third party app stores online. Also out of those 500 third app stores, Lots of, of applications uh, hide some kind of malicious uh, software inside, malware. So in majority of cases, there, is, there are no, no nothing, uh, there are no special user targeted attacks. You just turn on the unknown sources and you blindly trust the, the guys from the other side that something uh, that the, everything inside is valid and it's, it's benign. While in reality, majority of these cases just uh, had some malicious purpose inside. So when you surf the server around, all those markets have some cool ads, cool, uh, cool games, cool cracked software. Also, 
you most probably seen things like this. This is just the, the nice pop-up when you are being displayed, when you surf around. So imagine that you are an activist and you have the turned on unknown sources and you're just being displayed with this kind of, of a nice pop-up and you just play, press OK. You will, you will immediately install some kind of malicious malware. So also, this is the case from my mobile phone. Most probably, lots of you also has a nice Hello Kitty software inside. <laughs> I know what's the, what's the purpose of this software, but if I didn't knew, I would be pretty skeptic. So I have the Hello Kitty software. I didn't install it and has the permissions to access the network state, access camera, internet, read external storage, read phone state, record audio, write external storage. So <laughs> Hello Kitty <laughs> is a Hell Kitty. <laughs> This slide should pinpoint the, the problem with the, with the current Android permission user land. So currently there are more than 235 permissions. So you as a regular user, you'll be just presented with the nice pop-up box that will just list and list all those permissions that the, that the Hello Kitty wants. You just press yes. For example, Facebook app, this is part of this of this report here. Facebook app wants more than 20 permissions. It's the is the craziest application, legal application. So it wants you to give her uh, to give it more than 20 uh, permissions. So by giving it, just read it. What I can do. So. Guess what a real attacker could do against you. Also, when you surf around, I've seen lots of, in lots of occasions that I downloaded some APKs around. I didn't knew, so I wasn't aware. This was one occasion. There was an, one APK called News Reader. I didn't install it. It was being downloaded. So I went through its permissions. There are lots of permissions, but nothing strange because <laughs> I had to be an expert to know what each of those permissions meant. But you don't have to be a genius that something that can do the recording of audio, can access the camera, read contacts, call phone, is probably malicious. So I went to trouble to decompile it, and I found that it steals your email, phone number, country operator, SIM country, SIM operator. So lots of juicy information. Also, I found this nice class called Android Rat. So Android Rat is, is an open source project. So when you install something like this, you immediately become some part of, of a larger botnet and an operator at the other side of the world can just do the double click and, and do the calls on your own, steal your contacts, either steal SMSs or do things on your own. So now, demo. So, this the I'll make one of one such malicious APK. I'll run the Metasploit and I will install it on my up to date device. Here I'm running the Metapreter reverse handler. I will download it on my mobile by using the browser, so this can be a link inside your Gmail account or anything. I'm just shortening the, the attack procedure. So I'm installing it. It's, it needs crazy lot of, of permissions. 
but what the hell? You leave it only once. On this side, I as an attacker get an reverse connect. So I have the shell here. This uh, nice script persistent.sh as the metapreter's Android reverse handler or reverse uh, payload is it's really uh, not so stable. This is a trick. If it fails to, to back connect it, you try to back connect at, at a period of 30 seconds. And here you can see now I have the full control of the, of the phone. So phone is not routed, but I can dump all the SMSs. So I said this is up to date phone. It only had the option of unknown sources turn on. So I show you the content of so all my SMS transcripts went out. Also you can do dump the call log. So who called whom? Also, there's a nice feature called webcam stream. So you can turn on the webcam on demand. And just one more thing is you as an attacker, if you have the physical access, you don't have to, to force the user to, to download anything. You can just put the USB inside and just do this whole infection from the, from the shell itself. So some shady organizations just need a five minutes of your phone, just do the ADB install, Metasploit is on, start it, immediately I get the Metasploit's reverse connect, and that's basically it. And how to stay safe. So this is just the copy of the first slide, so don't store any sensitive data on SD card, normal. Perform regular OS updates, preferably automatic. If you can afford, repl replace the obsolete Android device. I mean, that's the also the uh, one of things that I uh, hate about the Google. They just force you with with all those uh, heavy duty software just to to pick the new one, so you don't have the choice at the end. You will just skip to the to the new to newer one. Don't root your device, obviously. Don't leave option USB debug and turn on. Use screen lock of any kind, and don't use option on source, preferably ever. That's it.